I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about the Ocean Beach surfers and that tribe yeah. uh, from, from there. Well, San Francisco had very few surfers then. And in fact, um, I was always meeting people in San Francisco who were from San Francisco who said there's no surfing in San Francisco. <laughs> I say, well, you know, there, there is. You know, they say, no, no, it's too rough, it's too this, it's too that, no surfing. And, and you could actually drive by it on the Great Highway, and there's guys out there, but you wouldn't notice them. So, I mean, there weren't enough surfboards around that anyone would notice them. And that's how it was in the early 80s when I first lived here. Um, excuse me. And, and it was actually, I mean, I eventually understood it better. I didn't at first. Um, but there were sort of two levels. There were locals, kids, guys who'd all, it was all men, who all gone to school together and to high school together and, and were like local locals. So should be mainly lived in the Sunset District and, and knew each other from forever. And had and, and come up the hard way, you know, like when you were small, you weren't even allowed in the water, you just had to build fires on the beach. And if you build good enough fires, eventually you're allowed to, you know, paddle out or something. And, and I, I hear all about the hard knocks of the old days and some of it I couldn't even believe. But so there was that group. And, and then there was a second group that I was part of, of people who came from somewhere else as, a, as adults who could already surf and, and didn't learn here. And I thought it was impossible to learn at Ocean Beach because it is so rough. But there are people who did. Um, or they'd maybe like sort of Fort Point or somewhere gentle, you know, to try to get their chops together. But basically, they learned it at, at Ocean Beach. And these are guys who would like go to the beach on their bicycles. It was, this was not people with any money. Um, and so there's that group. And then there was a second group of like professionals, let us say yuppies, you know, like me, um, coming in with sort of more education and more like coming from Hawaii and Australia and Southern California and other places. And, and it all seemed kind of seamless to me. Uh, like I, I didn't notice any kind of rift between those two until actually until I started reporting on the place. And that's when it became clear, ooh, ah, these guys don't like that guy. You know, and, uh, but I hadn't noticed it surfing with these people because everybody was on a first name basis. I mean, a lot of times you couldn't, especially if there was any swell, if it was big, you couldn't get anybody to go out with you. And, and you didn't want to go out alone. So you'd be up and down trying to find somebody to surf with. It was that uncrowded. Um, and on, on a mellower day, it'd get a little more crowded, but it never got crowded. Um, and it's a wonderful, wonderful wave um, for much of the year, fall, winter, and some of the spring. Um, it's one of the best beach breaks I've ever seen. And um, so I loved it, um, but uh, it was, I loved it. Um, I mean, the, the culture such as it was, like this guy I ended up writing about used to have um, slideshows, remember slideshows, anybody? Um, in his apartment down on, down on, on the water, on the ocean, on this great highway. And everybody was there, and everybody, all these jokes are flying, and they're all in jokes, and like, that's not you, because, you know, I mean, it was really, really a fun group, and I was really happy to get to know them. And there were some, there were some weirdos. There was a really eccentric guy who lived in the parking lot and traded stocks and said he went to Harvard Business School, and, and he was this really strong guy. We call him Sloat Bill. Um, and he, he hated me because I was this kind of skinny um, character, and, and, but I could, I could, it's hard to get out there often. You know, it's just a lot of white water and, and, and uh, duck dive, duck dive, duck dive. And he, he couldn't really, he was sort of, and he, he <laughs> couldn't like slip under the waves so easily. And I could, and he could like beat me up with one hand. But, but he, he, so there were all kinds of little weird resentments and jokes running around all the time. Um, and when I made fun of his surfing, he didn't take it very well. I, in fact, I later described him as like a redwood log rolling around in the white water. <laughs> Should not have done that. But it was a pretty neat scene, I thought. And, uh, and as I say, the, the, the sort of rifts in it, and I knew people on both sides, um, were later revealed. And, and the intensity of the surf, cold water, relative, it doesn't seem that cold to me now because I live in New York City and surf all winter, but relatively cold. Uh, and wetsuits were relatively bad, so you really got cold. You come in with your hands too numb to, you know, drive your car, and and just uh, it was intimidating. You know, it wasn't super dangerous really, but it felt dangerous often. And so it was that. It was often like you knew, you know, say there were this many surfers in all of San Francisco. You knew this guy will go out when it's six feet and under. This guy will go out when it's like maybe eight feet. This guy, uh, no. Nope. And, and you just knew what everybody's limit was. And you see something, you go, oh, if he's paddling out, I gotta go out, because I'm, I'm braver than him, I think. You know? <laughs> and that was an intense thing, which I'd seen plenty of other places in Hawaii and other places, but, but it was really tight here. And so you'd get guys who were kind of, you know, macho, kind of made men, OG type surfers here. 
It's a little big, and they're just kind of sitting in their cars watching, and they'd get really pissed off if some, you know, <laughs> flighty newcomer like me paddled out. Um, so there was those kind of tensions, but you know, that's that's boys. <laughs>